सबा जो आई है करबला से सबा जो आई है करबला से हजारों सद में उठा रही है हुसैन इब्न If children making noise, don't turn your heads towards them. That what kind of a mischief they're doing? We are familiar with their mischief, you know, with their naughty behavior. We know what kind of things they do. So it's not something different that they're going to do tonight. Good, inshallah. If somebody is opening the door, don't look at there. Okay, who's coming inside? Inshallah, you can look at it. I'm not trying to be a dictator. You can look at it, but these things helps you to be more, have a more concentration. in your salat in your meetings in your speeches in your listening inshallah a good listener can become a good speaker hain a good listener can become a, a wise and a knowledge, knowledgeable person half of the knowledge we learn through listening is through listening so inshallah we ask allah to put barakat in our listening amen <coughs> so we ready okay alhamdulillah so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Few lessons I want to share with you all from the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. Number one, submission to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As we discussed, as we uh, elaborated or highlighted yesterday, that from the beginning, Imam Hussein. while he was 4 or 5 years old he was well aware that he will be martyred he will be killed on the plains of the karbala and even the soil was shown to him the clay was shown to him through angel malakul matar the angel of rain through angel jibril alayhi salatu wassalam but subhanallah throughout his life he had the whole life to ask allah he had the whole life to ask muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam but they never indulged themselves in this kind of the conversation i don't think so we are familiar with any narration where he is talking and pleading where he is begging his nana his grandfather that please request to allah to for my you know protection on the day of the karbala nothing like that because they were mentally prepared they understood what is the will of allah subhanahu wa taala they understood what is the fate what is the what is the tak- taqdeer or qadar what is their decree what is their decision of allah subhanahu wa taala and to be honest my brothers and sisters if we can understand that that allah is qadir over everything and whatever happens it happens with the will of allah with the permission of allah there will be no any sorrow there will be no any misery there will be no any anxiety there will be no any depression there will be no any fear in our life why we have fear because what if this happen what if that happen fear we always have about the future remember that fear is always for the future and what they say grieving is mostly is for the past isn't it for the mazi fear has a lot to do with the future and most of the time we are afraid of our health we sometimes afraid of our death as well we are afraid what if something happen to my house something happen to my salary my job my business all these things but in reality these things are controlled handled and designed by allah subhanahu wa taala when it comes to the risk let me give you one secret when it comes to the provision when it comes to the sustenance don't worry because this is not in your hand risk is not in your hand absolutely not a single person of it is in not it is not in your hand risk who is the distributor razak allah allah is the distributor of the wealth Allah is the distributor of the provision whom he gives whom he doesn't give. So you you don't need to worry what if my next meal is coming or not if my daughter is going to go in a good college or not don't worry make the preparation for it. I'm not saying sit at home and just watch Netflix no. Make the preparation. Tie your camel but your mind should be empty from the worries. This this mind has a lot to do with our health. This mind has a lot to do with our joys and with our success and with our happiness and with our failures mind if you mentally strong no power can defeat you and if you your belly no matter how big your mind is small then you loser so it is not the size of your belly is not the size of your wealth or is not the size of your knowledge is the size of your mind mind game some of you have 
big bellies, mashallah. May Allah put barakat in your bellies. Say ameen, inshallah. Barakat in a weather, may Allah decrease it, inshallah, for betterment. For our betterment, inshallah. Ya yeah, alhamdulillah. So mind, ask Allah. That is why, you know, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make specific duas about the anxiety, about the depression, about the fear. What is a dua? Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min alham wal hazan. Ya Allah, I ask your protection from the anxiety, from the depression, from, the, from, from these kind of mental sicknesses. We have a lot of mental sicknesses nowadays. A lot. Most of you, most of us mentally ill. <laughs> That's what we believe. We are. I accept it. I'm being very honest with you all. And we have to address these issues. If you're getting angry for small, small things, it means that something wrong with our man, mind. Some screws are not, not tight, is loose. Eh? Small, small things. If a, a person is giving you a hard, bad drive, you're going to you know, follow him and chase him till his grave, I think. Eh, and all kind of signs you showing him and you moving your cars. I see all kind of the things, road rages, eh? road rage. So small, small things upsets us. So anger has a lot to do with our mind. We get irritated on a small things. We get frustrated on the st small things. If you have a habit of a being stubborn, something is very straightforward, but no, you want your way. It means that mental illness is, is true. This is it. So that is why. Why we have these mental illnesses? Why we have mental problems? Because we have what the antidote of the mind we have actually abandoned. And what is the antidote? Is Quran. Is the zikrullah. Is the dua. Allah bi zikrillahi tatmainul kulub. Indeed in the zikr of Allah do heart finds the peace. The mind finds the peace. The heart finds the peace. Zikrullah. But shaitan tells us no. In the alcohol you will find the peace. In the music you will find the peace. In movies you will find the peace. Dancing you will find the peace. In riches you will find the peace. In fame and in name you will find the peace. I swear by Allah that's how the shaitan portrays. And most of us, most of us we are deluded and this is what we see on the television as well. In different seasons, in different movies, in different dramas. That's what they're portraying. No? That's what they're portraying. They're taking you from the real thing. And they're giving you fabricate, fabrication. They're giving you the artificial thing. Artificial artificial things so allahumma inni a'uzu bika min alham wal hazan wal ajz wal kasal wal bukhl wal jubun all this is the dua of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam i can write it down for you but you can say it in in, in your english inshallah the allah protect me from the anxiety protect me from the depression protect me from the fear protect me from the misery from being stingy protect me from being stingy okay and uh, is uh, protect me from the laziness we are lazy we are lazy, that is why we are not coming for the Fajr Salat. Eh? We are lazy. For men is not allowed to perform Fajr Salat at home. If you are feeling offended, no problem. Just eat extra piece of chicken. We have for you. For men is not allowed to perform their Salat at the home unless they have a very, 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 very valid excuse. Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even there is a saying, authentic saying, Imam Bukhari transmitted this. When he came to know that men are performing their salat in their homes, so he, like, he desired for, to burn their houses. Although he's a rahmatul alameen, he didn't do that. Our sisters can perform their salat in their, in their homes, in their privacy, but men must be at the masjid. <coughs> masjid is not for putting their condition and giving the bills on a monthly basis. It's for the salat, for the five salat. If you're coming in the masjid for everything else, but if you're not coming for the, in the masjid for the salat, so it means something is lacking. I'm not discouraging you from anything. Alhamdulillah, you're coming in the masjid, at least you're coming it. But still, what is obligatory is obligatory. Don't give pr priority to the optional things. And you're abandoning the obligation. Sometimes we focus on the you know, optional things. And we totally abandon the obligatory things. For example, sometimes we... Sometimes we get very emotional and very ambitious, ambitious and we end up performing the tahajjud salat. We perform tahajjud, tahajjud, tahajjud. We listen the Islamic lectures whole night. But what happens? When the time of the fajr comes, we are sleeping. So that tahajjud, the entire night you are performing tahajjud, that will not give you a single benefit. 
if you miss the one farad salat, farad salat. Don't mix the farad with sunnat and sunnat with nafil, no. Farad is farad. So brothers and sisters, ask Allah, Ya Allah protect me from the laziness. Small, small things, some time is spending because of our laziness. We are not only lazy in our salat, in our, in our deen, sometimes in our business we lazy, in our jobs we are lazy, we can't make an effort a little bit. We can't, you know, remove our, mashallah, our jism or our jasad or our body to go outside and to drop our resume in companies or to drop our resumes in different places so that they can hire me. We don't make those efforts because we want easy. Remember, al yadul ulya khairul yad min al yadul sufla. Upper hand is better than the lower hand. Upper hand is better than the lower hand. Brother, push yourself, push yourself, and work hard. Allah will put the barakat, inshallah. So, from where I have started this discussion. <clears throat> Submission to Allah's will. Yeah? So if you are understanding, yes, if you understand the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decisions of Allah, everything will be solved. Everything will be solved. Your provision is in the hand of Allah. Your life is in the hand of Allah. Your provision is written even before you came in this dunya. When you were in the womb of the mother, Allah sent the angel to write how much you're going to make. How much barbecue you're going to eat? How much albek you're going to eat? Albek in Saudi Arabia. How much KFC you're going to eat? How much doubles you're going to eat? How much zamzam water you're going to drink? All that is written. So that is, give that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let Allah, let Allah be worried about your provision. You don't need to worry. He will look after you just have iman that inshallah Allah is my provider he will provide me as long as I make the effort Allah will put the uh, barakat in my efforts effort is from me the result is from Allah effort is from me result is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Imam Hussain taught us that submission to Allah is important submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gracefully and in a very courageous way in a very with open mind, with open heart, he accepted this will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't shed the tears. He didn't cry. I want a comfortable life. I, I don't want this, Ya Rasulullah. I don't want this. No, because they knew that the true salvation, the true success is in the life of the hereafter. A believer, the true believer realizes and he understands and he believes that when he dies, that is where his life begins. Death gives him life. Death is life, my brother. So just look at the life of Imam Hussein. Although the Yazid was able to cut the head of Imam, uh, Imam Hussein, but who remains alive? Yazid or Imam Hussein? Imam Hussein. He resonates in our mind, in our memories, and he will be with us till the day of judgment. Hussein, Hussein, we will chant his name throughout our life, in every single corner of the world. So, we, when we die, Allah gives us a life. Because that is the only way we can meet with our Creator. You know, what is the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That tuhfatul mu'min al maut Aw kama qala alayhi wa sallam That the gift for the believer is death. For the believer, a gift is death. It doesn't mean that go outside and put the knife in your belly and kill yourself. Astaghfirullah. No. It means that whenever the death is ready for you, embrace it. Don't ask for Allah that, Ya Allah, give me death, give me death. No. But rather make this dua, Ya Allah, as long as my life is good, give me life. And when the death is good, give me the death. This was the dua of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught to the Sahaba Ikram. But we don't want to make these kind of the duas which has death words. Eh? Make these duas. End of the day, you have to die. Eventually, you have to die. So why not to die a, 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 a good death, an easy death? A comfortable death. Ya Allah, give me relaxing death. Ya Allah, give me comfortable death, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, take my soul in Jannatul Baqi. Ya Allah, take my soul while I am performing the Hajj. While I am performing the Umrah. While I am in the city of Makkah. While I am in the city of Medina. Why you don't make these duas? Because we are afraid of the death. We think that what if I make dua and next day I die? I died away. It's possible. Sometimes duas are accepted right away. Eh, anyway? 
so nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said two things will destroy you hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut love of dunya and the hatred for the death so we ask allah not to make us among these kind of people the second lesson we learn from the life of imam hussein that never accept the humiliation no matter what is better to sacrifice is better to bleed than a living a one day with embarrassment then a living a day by you know bowing your head in front of the tyrants or in front of the oppressors or in front of the people what is haq is haq what is truth is truth don't surrender yourself there is something which is called your self respect you must have it but sometimes people use self respect for the wrong reason but this was used for the positive reason by imam hussein ha eh? he didn't surrender the deen of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam he died with honor and honor will be rested on imam hussein till the day of judgment and disgrace and embarrassment will be rested on yazid and his army till the day of judgment anybody anybody who contributed towards the killing of imam hussein or anybody encouraged towards the killing of imam hussein directly or indirectly or anybody even felt the joy and happiness over the killing of imam hussein he or she will face the curse of allah till the day of judgment there's a lanat of allah lanat of allah on the day of judgment as well there is no room for them how can you do something like that with the grandson how can you chop that head which was kissed by thousand time by the blessed lips of nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam hain bhai how can you do something that but subhanallah we understand that was the status for imam hussein allah has elevated him and the third lesson that we learned from the story of imam hussein is you know when he was surrounded by the army of yazid yazid was the name of the khalifa at his time he is the main culprit behind everything and ibn ziyad as well the governor of kufa when the army when the when the when the tents of imam hussein when they were surrounded by the army of yazid so one of them the leader one of them was hur by the name of hur so what happened in the beginning he was very offensive towards imam hussein or the towards the family of imam hussein but later on allah has guided him allah guided him and then he goes by imam hussein and he tells him imam i i seek your forgiveness i have realized and allah has opened my heart and my eyes and my mind and i am surrendering myself you decide what you want to do with me you want to kill my self you want to slit my throat go ahead do it i am ready for that i can't do this with you i can't do this with you so i am here with my entire army with my entire force you decide so then what imam hussein did if it was somebody like us what he would have done imam hussein forgave him imam hussein forgave him and then this person hur who was the sipai salar who was the army leader he died with imam hussein while defending him subhanallah so because he learned he learned from his nana from his grandfather when his nana when his grandfather entered to the makkah city he forgave all of them fath e makkah he forgave all of them although they were the same people who ridiculed him embarrassed him you know do do all kind of the humiliation but he forgave all of them subhanallah so this is the lesson that we learn no matter how look how bad something can be more worse than this because this guy was going to kill him this was this guy was going to kill the entire family of imam hussein but he asked his forgiveness and he forgave him these people you know they didn't materialize this dunya my brother and sister they understood what is what is true and what is wrong they understood what is everlasting people like us because we we are drowned in this dunya including me as well we are drowned in this dunya so that is why sometimes it gets difficult for us to forgive people because think we think that everything we have to decide here leave something for the life of the hereafter as well nabi leave something for allah to decide as well why you want to be judge and jury for every matter ha eh? forgive people and when you forgive people forgive from the heart don't tell people i have forgiven him i have forgiven him he did this and that with me i have forgiven him 
don't hold anything in your heart just forgive from the heart inshallah for allah and you will see how much allah will put barakat in your heart and how much sukoon and itminan allah will put try it and you will see the result try you will see the result the fourth lesson we learn from the life of imam hussein is enjoining the good and forbidding the evil that is very obvious ask yourself when haram happens in front of you do you stop it ask yourself na bhai those who sitting here how many of us is talking about lbgtq how many of us how many of us is going talking talking about this lesbianism and this gayism and this all kind of uh, haramism how many of us so it means that we not forbidding the evil eh we just saying allahu akbar allahu akbar no islam is not all about allahu akbar islam is not all about doing good islam is also stopping the evil forbidding the evil from when we going to enter into the paradise just by doing the good no my brother you must stop the evil if you see it kuntum khaira umma you are the best nation why because the amuruna bil ma'ruf you invite people towards the goodness wa tanhauna anil munkar and you stop them from the evil as well when your son is lying how many times you stop him when your wife is lying or when your husband is lying or when your parents is lying you know your children is lying in the business you know your children is lying on the phone with somebody but you telling keep keep doing it keep doing it because our mind is brainwashed we think that to survive in this society we must lie we must deceive people we must outsmart people we must fool people otherwise if you will not fool somebody somebody will fool us eh if you will not lie to somebody somebody else will lie to us so it's better i i lie first before somebody outsmart me but no my brothers and sisters you have to stick with the principles you have to stick what is right and allah will allah will be your protector inshallah allah will allah will hold your hands believe in him believe in him he will hold your hands if you are on the right path inshallah good so these are the four things that i thought i should share with you all there are hundreds of things that we can talk subhanallah inshallah we will talk inshallah we will talk and i hope that whatever i have just delivered you understood and you will keep this message to your heart whatever i say my brothers and sisters i swear by allah wallahi i'm sitting in the masjid i i mentioned this thousand time whatever i say i do not say for my personal interest for my personal benefit for my personal motives or something like that my joy is when you come in the masjid my joy is when you do good and i believe same is the case with you all as well if i do wrong you should correct me as well and if you do wrong give me the permission to correct you as well eh huh? and surround yourself with the people who can correct you in a humble way in a wise way in a very you know kind way don't surround yourself by the people who always say yes man yes madam yes boss yes haji saab yes imam saab yes 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 this yes will destroy us i'm telling you learn to hear no no will make your career no will make your future because when people will say no to you or when you will say no to yourself you will correct your mistakes you will rectify your mistakes but if you surround yourself with bunch of people those who always mama gay you those who put butter you butter all kind of butter mashallah 1 kg butter with honey and nice and you feel i bhai i am the best one i am the best one i'm telling you praises it, it deceives us that is why the kings and the queens and these people these yazid and them all the you know not all few of the khalifas of the islam the rulers of the islam they were surrounded by the people those who used to you good you great great you are great and nobody was there to correct them and sometimes we we the way we behave it stops people to correct us it's it stops people if you are ignorant and if you are if you are haughty and if you are always furious when people correcting you then next time nobody will correct you because they don't want to upset you they don't want to offend you they don't want to lose their friendship so they will next time tell you those things that you want to hear so the person who tells you things which you do not want to hear for your betterment i tell you you should hug him and you should give him 10000 every month yes you should give him 50000 every month you should adore him you should cherish him don't give me bhai don't give me i'm not talking about me 
You should cherish that person. But we don't do that. We run him. We run, we run her. We run that person. So be wise, inshallah. Be wise. Be wise. <coughs> inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the wise people. Ameen. Any question you want to ask? You are most welcome to ask. Any question? Amin alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Allahumma anta as-salam wa minka as-salam tabarak tayyad al-jalali wal ikram Allahumma a'inna ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik Ya Allah We are very grateful, we are very thankful that you have guided us on this blessed day together here in this masjid Only for your sake and only for your pleasure We ask you Allah continue to guide us towards these kind of the gatherings Ya Allah Ya Allah every second that we spend here Ya Allah Ya Allah, make these hours or these minutes or these seconds a means of the forgiveness for us, Ya Allah. A means of the success for us, Ya Allah. A means of the goodness for us, Ya Allah. A means of the barakat for us, Ya Allah. A means of the sukoon and the itminan for us, Ya Allah. A means of the getting closer to you and your Habib, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, what can be better than the gathering where your name and where the name of your Habib is mentioned, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you, Allah, continue to call us, Ya Allah. And continue to make us your mehman, Ya Rabbul Alameen, your guest, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, continue to invite us at your doorsteps so that we can wash our sins, Ya Rabbul Alameen. So that we can build our relationship with you, Ya Allah, for your sake and for your pleasure, Ya Allah. For every step that we took towards the masjid, our brothers, those who are sitting here, our elderly brothers, those sitting, our children, our sisters at Tabak, MashaAllah. All those who made the contribution, all those who make, made the effort towards the masjid, reward them for every step that they took the, towards the masjid, Ya Allah. Forgive the sins for every step, Ya Allah. Elevate them for every, ste- uh, for every step, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Write a good deed for every step, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ardi, Ya Allah. Bless each and every one of us, Ya Allah. Guard and guide each and every one of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us the wisdom, grant us the knowledge which can benefit us in this dunya and as well as in the life of thereafter. Grant us the health and the strength, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, remove our sicknesses, Ya Allah. Minor sicknesses, major sicknesses, Ya Allah. Spiritual sicknesses, Ya Allah. Physical sicknesses, Ya Allah. Remove our mental illnesses, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Give us peace of mind, Ya Allah. Peace of mind, Ya Allah. Peace of heart, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Make us among those, those whose hearts are content, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Those who have the itminan and those who have the firm yakin in your decisions, Ya Allah. Those who submit themselves completely to your, to your decisions, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless each and every one of us, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Bless Brother Imtiaz and his beloved wife, Ya Allah, and his son, Ya Allah, and his entire family, his father, Ya Rabbul Alameen, his mother, Ya Allah, his parents, Ya Rabbul Alameen, and his business, Ya Allah, his each and every single thing, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ardi. Put the barakat and blessing in his health, in his wealth, in his sustenance, in his each and everything, Ya Allah. Bless my brothers and sisters, those who contributed towards the iftar and dinner with their time, with their wealth, with their energy. From last two days, Ya Allah, reward them richly, Ya Allah, for making the effort to making these programs very successful. Reward them richly, Ya Rabbul Alameen, in this dunya and as well as in the life of the hereafter, Ya Rabbul Samawati Wal Ardi. Accept our du'as for the sake of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khiri khalqi wa nuri arshiv janati farshi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Rahmatika ya rahman rahim. So please proceed to the hall for dinner.